Hello, welcome back to Farming Simulator. Today I'm going to take a look at vehicle control add-on, specifically how to use the GPS that's built into it. I use it on most of my gameplay. I find it slightly easier to use than the Wopsters Guide and Steering, which is also a great mod and I used to use a lot. I just find this one is a little bit quicker to set up and get going with once you've got to grips with setting up VCA. But the first bit we're going to cover is basically how to turn most of the vehicle control add-on off. Um, it's got all sorts of clever stuff to do with gearboxes and changing how the tractor steer and things. I don't like most of it, so I switch it off. Um, so to open vehicle control add-ons menu, you hit left control and C. And that brings you up uh, five different menu options. And I have a list here of the settings that I change to get it how I want. Um, so we have internal camera rotation i have off exterior camera rotation i have off backwards i have off peak sideways is on i thought i had that switched off but i guess not that driving off that one's off it kind of seems like this has already picked up my settings i'm just going to check no it hasn't cool okay um so going further down, adaptive steering off, steering speed still at 50%, inverse steering at 50%, uh, snap angle, we will come to that in a moment. This is, these are the, are the settings that control the GPS. I will come back to how we use those. And on to the next menu. And I don't think I touch anything on here. I'm just scrolling through my list. No, I leave all of that the same. This is the important one particularly if you don't want things like gearboxes and shuttles. Um, so first one, shuttle off. That's the, uh, with VCA you hit space to go change to forwards and space to change to reverse. And then uh, W is your accelerator or whatever you used for if you're using a wheel and S is a brake. It's more realistic, but I've got so used to playing without it that I really can't. The next important one, and you have to do this, um, actually you can go across to global settings, I believe. No, um, so the next one you do, you need to do this for each tractor, I think, is to change the transmission and I switch it to off. That basically makes the tractor drive like if you didn't have VCA switched on. Excuse me. Um, Everything else, I think I leave the same. Yes. Um, last one is to do with differentials and things, and I don't think I change anything on here. No, you can use this to play around with how fast your tractor can go, how powerful it is. There are some options to tweak the torque power, or, or power curve so you can make the tractor more powerful. Again, I don't touch any of these. Uh, global settings, I believe I leave alone as well. Pretty sure, yep, I leave all those alone. Okay, um, so that's just how to get VCA to behave, or tractors to behave like VCA isn't on. If you'll have noticed now, uh, just above the, the the speedo and the tachometer, not the tachometer, um, uh, just above the speedo anyway, the, uh, the symbol for the shuttle has gone, and now we can just drive our tractor backwards and forwards using the normal controls something that's important with vca that i found is tractors will roll um not roll over as in if you're on a slope they will roll down the slope um, which can be kind of annoying uh, the fix for that is the uh semicolon key i'm not sure what that is for uh our american friends so i will put up uh the symbol as i edit the video but you can now see over the speedo we get the little parking brake sign um, so now you can see we're hitting the throttle and we're not moving uh, switch it off and we can move again and if you hit it track stops okay those are the basics of setting up vca so that it doesn't affect how things work and now we can look at the gps um, so we, we've got our oh, I will go see to here. This is kind of the, the easy, easiest one because it's just something that's affixed to it with no offset. Once we've done this, I'll jump over to the plow we have in the field. I've actually got two, um, but I think the lemkin that I've got over here shows it off better. And we'll hook up to the plow and we'll look at offsets and how that works. 
really quite simple. So again, if we bring up the GUI, just Control C, head back over to the very first menu. Um, we've got a working width. We've got a snap angle. This is um, how fine an angle you can set your heading. If you're on a map like a Giants map, 45 degrees is probably great because most of the fields are square. If you're on a map that's not a Giants map, I tend actually to run it at one degree, which basically means you can point the tractor where you want. Um, working width, you've down here, you've got auto detect working width, which actually works pretty well. So if I set it to the wrong number and then we hit detect width, it finds it. Um, and then we'll look at offsets when we pick the plow up. So let's close that. Um, the next thing we want to do is set our heading really. I'm just going to creep the tractor forwards a little bit. So we're on about 180. Um, and we then just hit Control W. That sets our heading. You can see in the bottom right hand corner in green we've got 180 degrees which is our heading at 8 meters which is our width. If we turn the uh, GPS off you do that by steering you can see it it's not green anymore so if we hit Control w again it goes green um, you see we've got the marker lines actually which i forgot to cover that is down here in the bottom left hand corner and you can choose so if inactive means that they will flash up for a little while and then they will fade off this is the setting that i tend to use and you'll see how that looks here in a minute uh, you can have always on uh, i'm not sure what the inf inactive high and always high are out or never um, actually we'll put it on always high just to see what it looks like okay so that gives us kind of a uh, a fence type look so for this i think i'm going to leave it on always on for a second just so you can see what it looks like the next thing we're going to cover is what if i haven't got my course set quite right so for that if you hold down the control key and then do the up and down arrows you can change the angle slightly if you see in the bottom left hand bottom right hand corner my angle is changing and you can see the marker lines are changing okay so we'll get that back to 180 and then if you want to move it left and right that's left control and the left and right arrows so you can just shift that around and you, know, you can you can then line it up perfectly with your headland if you want okay that's pretty much most of the controls the other thing we can do if we want and I'm just going to set the width wrong. And so you can see we've got the wrong width. If you hold left control, left alt and hit W, that auto sets the width for you as well. I'll, if I remember when I do the edit, I'll try and flash up the keyboard controls on the screen as I'm using them, just in case I'm not particularly clear on my voice. Um, so now we've got the GPS on. We can see that in the bottom right from the text being green. Uh, we'll switch our cedar on we'll drop it down and I just hit cruise control and just let it run um, and the disadvantage it doesn't have over Wopster's guidance steering is it doesn't have the headland indication so you don't get the beep as you get near the headland you get the beep as you switch it off um, so you see if I just nudge the steering ever so slightly left or right we get the beep of the GPS switching off but we don't get it when we approach a headland. I'm happy with that just because I find this so quick and easy to set up. When I used to use Wopster's GPS, I used to like using the heading mode. And I always found that was a little bit tricky to set rather than rather than using the AB mode, which I think a lot of people tend to use. Oh, this doesn't want to turn. This is a bad setup. Um, a lot of people tend to use the AB line. I wasn't a fan of that. I like being able to set heading. So we'll just drop our cedar down, hit cruise control again. I guess I'm suffering because I went for jewels on the back and this is a pretty snug setup. Um, so if I now hit control C again and change the markers to inactive and press back, uh, we'll find that the markers drop away and you get a nicer looking game, I guess. I quite like that they fade away. The only thing is if you're if you're working across a big field and you're leaving a bit of a gap to manoeuvre, like I've needed to leave about four rows to turn this damn thing around. Sometimes it's nice to have them up so you can kind of count those rows. We'll do 
another very wide turn. Really should have taken a different tractor for this. And we'll just hit down again and we'll hit the uh, cruise control. That's pretty much the basics of the GPS. Setting it up like this works with just about everything that doesn't have an offset. Sometimes, like Wops does one, the auto width detect doesn't work quite right, particularly on mods, and you might need to tweak that a bit. I don't think there's a key control to adjust the width. I might be wrong. If there is, and someone knows, please leave a comment, and we can uh, we can get that included. And I'd really like to know because sometimes it'd be really handy to be able to do that. Um, but that that's the basics. I use this with uh, combines, forage harvesters, mowers, cultivators, everything. That turns slightly better, so let's drop it down again. And off we go. Uh, we'll run back down here, and then I think we'll pick up the plough, and we'll look at that. Because I, I did used to find with Wopster's one that it was quite difficult to set up ploughs to work with the offset. Um, I managed it a few times, but not very often. And it was one of the reasons that I very rarely used to use the kind of offset plows. That and a lot of plows are offset plows, unless you're using something that's kind of either very small or a little bit cheaty. Um, so let's leave that there, and we'll grab the Lemkin plow. The other control I forgot to tell you, if you want to completely clear off the course that you've got set, that's left alt and W. So left control W sets it, left alt W clears it. So we will grab our Lemkin plow. I've gone for this one because it does have quite a nice obvious offset. So we'll unfold it. Yes, I'm going to plow back in the crop that I just planted. What I'm actually going to do here is a couple of things. I'm going to set the snap angle to 5 because I want to hit 180. And I'm going to put the display markers to always on just so we can see what's happening. So if we now hit Control W, you can see it's jumped to 180 degrees, but it's still set on the 8 meter width of the cedar. So if we now do left Control, left Alt and W together, we get the right settings, except that I'm facing the wrong way, so I need to rotate my plow. This worked so well when I was practicing this. This is quite strange. Um, no, I did have it right, actually. I'm just being dumb. Excuse me for a second. We'll just rotate it back the other way. This is one of those tutorials where um, things don't always go completely as planned, but this is the reality of playing Farming Simulator, I guess. If I edit everything out, people will think that nothing ever goes wrong. So now you can see that we're quite nicely ploughing along the uh, the two outer lines. We've got a little bit of an offset, on, well, quite a big offset on the plough, actually. I'm not going to go all the way along the field. It'll make this quite a long video of just me ploughing stuff. So now we're going to spin around... We're going to fold the plough, not fold the plough, rotate the plough. Get on our next row, hit Control w again. Plough will straighten up and then drop the plough down. And that nicely matches up to the uh, ploughing from the previous row. I, I found I, I don't use a lot of offset plows to be honest I had to do a bit of testing before I uh, jumped in to make the video with the offset stuff I tend to use those cheaty plows or the small plows or I don't bother rotating them if you've watched some of my videos and I uh, I just go around and accept the fact that things might not line up properly so we'll just do another row a little bit of maneuvering some of these big plows I find are quite tricky to manoeuvre. Like the uh, the Salford that's the base game 10 meter plow. Used that a few times and wow that thing is hard to get around a field. Probably some of the reality of trying to plow with a 10 meter plow. And maybe why you don't see many of them. 
certainly around where I am, most stuff is fairly small. But yeah, that's that's using a plow, using the auto offset uh, settings. If if you wanted to, you could manually change them in here. Something I found, and I don't have it handy, is that with some implements, it will set an offset when there isn't one. Um, so you may need to come in and delete the offsets and fix the width. And it's one of those things that I said, some mods, the auto width doesn't work very well. And that picks up as um, the example that is the Amazon fertilizer spreader that I use quite a lot. Um, that, when it's set, it's 41 meter width, actually picks up as a 20 meter width with a 10 meter offset each side. It might work, and I've, I always correct it. Um, yeah, so that's uh, VCA GPS. I, I know a lot of people don't like VCA because of the extra stuff that it brings in. This hopefully shows you how to switch all of that off. So take the settings that I've got. If it's not clear and people want to, I can drop the screenshots of those on my Discord or go back and pause the video and grab those settings. I had a bunch of screenshots that I took um, that I have on my phone so that I could go through because um, yeah, it's, it's tricky to remember what they all need to be. Um, and I think I'm just rambling now, so I'll probably call it a day here. If you've actually watched all the videos, thanks for watching. If you're not already, think about subscribing. Stick on the notifications so you can catch my regular Let's Play videos. Uh, leave me a comment if you found it useful or not. Or if I've been a complete noob and made loads of mistakes and you can help me make a new version which is better. Catch you next time, everyone.